Welcome back to episode two of the BMW M5 Refresh, where we finish this thing up and we add a little bit of old school performance. If you guys are just tuning in, in the previous episode, we took care of the intake system. We did a, like a full refresh on all the hoses and vacuum lines. Um, we also did a valve shim job and we took care of that tensioner, which the previous one was leaking and bad and now everything is good mechanically. This car, unbeknownst to me until recently, has a set of straight pipes right here. So the catalytic converters have been removed and that's why it was so stinky. Every time I started this car, I was like, oh wow, this car is super, super stinky. And at first I thought, you know what, maybe I'll try to source the OEM catalytic converters, which would be very, very difficult. And then I thought, you know what, they're 30 years old, they're gonna be expensive, they're gonna be old, who knows if they're gonna do any good so I did the right thing and I ordered up a set of G Sport these are non EPA compliant catalytic converters they are both high flow um, they have a 300 cell count so they'll likely outperform the old cats but they're still going to do their job as catalytic converters and you know if you're in uh, an area like California you will want the EPA ones the non EPA ones really are for older classic cars and areas that don't require don't need you to meet EPA uh, requirements. So I think the big thing here is to figure out where I'm gonna mount these. I don't think I'm gonna be able to mount them side by side. They would be very, very close, but I don't really see a reason why. I'm gonna offset them a little bit like this, and I think we're gonna be just fine. There you have it, two Jezzy cats welded in and uh, definitely not my best MIG welding. I thought it was gonna be the quicker and simpler way, but it turned out with this like dirty corroded metal, it was not a lot of uh, success. But you know, after a couple passes and making sure everything was good, we have these cats in place and I think they're gonna be awesome. I think I've uh, gone and screwed up because I installed the exhaust system and I just realized Look at this, I have an E60 uh, shifter lever here and this is for a short shift setup. And I bet you I could have had easier access without these two pipes. The drive shaft obviously is the, uh, the biggest problem. So now like an idiot, I'm gonna have to fight the exhaust and the drive shaft to try to get the shift lever out of there. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do when it's up here. It'd be nice if it was dropped, but that's just too much work. Pro tip here, you can see I'm trying to remove the lever and this plastic cup here is what's holding it in. And uh, apparently what we just need to do here is rotate this clockwise and it should pop out if I can just get it to rotate. I just gotta get it in, there we go. There it goes, yeah. My light's falling, but uh, okay, does, does that mean it's, oh, look at that! Sweet! Magnificent! Wow, that was so much easier than I uh, thought it would be. Wow, I did not expect the difference between the shifters to be that uh, dramatic. You can see down here, 
the length where the ball is on that E60 is way, way longer, which uh, I assume gives it the shorter throw. But now I'm kind of thinking, hmm, this is gonna change the way that rod is down there. But anyways, now that it's uh, such an easy install and removal, let's just see what happens. So shifter is in place and uh, it is certainly a much shorter throw. There is a little higher effort to it though. So there is a bit of a trade-off. Um, I certainly love this shifter. I have this same shifter in my E39 uh, M5 Touring and it's really crisp, really nice. So I think I'm going to love this thing, but when we drive it, we'll know for sure. So this is a surprising turn of events. Uh, the DME is out and uh, it says Dynan Pro Chip on here, which in turn, when I opened up the DME here, you can see this is a Dynan M5 chip that has been installed on this board already. Um, judging by the piece of tape, this is a, a, an old chip for sure. I can see by the, the new ones, they are a little bit different, but who knows, it's likely the same coating. I can't imagine it's been um, reformatted. Uh, this is a De Silva Tech chip, which is an EAT Ultra chip. I had this one programmed specifically for this car for our gasoline 91 pump. And really, if you've got a stock chip and you're going to one of these, the, the advantage is, you know, there's talk of horsepower, but really for me, it's like the smoothed out uh, linear torque curve on it. it. It has a good torque bump and it just makes the car more drivable. The throttle response is better and all that. So I am going to install this chip because I don't know where this chip is from. It could be for a, for a California based car, who knows? So I'm putting this in and I, I know Mark and he's local. So he's got like a spot on tune for 91 octane for our gas here. So this is the way to go in my opinion. And let's, uh, let's see, this should be a rather easy swap here. I think I just gotta slowly pry around on this DP. Yeah, you don't wanna Back turn Back and this. forth. I know, this Classic is like a 30 year old cars. ECU. If you don't do this right, things uh, I took things the will same be bored out of my vintage Pac-Man uh, arcade. Oh machine. come on now! I think it's a little bit better than that. There it is. Wow. Oh yeah, this is vintage for sure. Wow, holy smoke! So now I'm just gonna drop this thing in and uh, put this all back together. So quick tip here, uh, you see this notch, you certainly wanna make sure that this is facing the way it is on the board. You can see there's a, on that white outline, the notch is there and the Dynan chip had the notch this way. When I originally tried to put it in, it was the wrong way. So don't make that mistake or you may fry your ECU and then things are gonna get bad. So now I can finally flip this around. This is a pretty neat board here, DP. It is, yeah. When you look at it, the way it goes back in. Dude, look how vintage, look, look at this thing, the tape on here. I don't even know how old this is. I'm gonna take this off. This doesn't have a, a iron chip in it anymore, but man, this chip has had to have been in there for a very, Since the mid very, very, early very, 90s. very long time. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. So, oh. That Bosch, Motronic. Oh yeah. All the yeah. classic German stuff. All the good stuff, exactly. quick and let's smell the exhaust oh yeah man those cats made a world of a difference yeah, yeah it's I incredible don't smell at all, actually. before it was just like instantly would hit you oh, with yeah. like noxious or uh, nauseous gas fuel, like yeah. fuel yeah. now it's it's way better so that's a, that's a huge victory here here it is, our wheel and tire reveal for tires. You guys know what we have gone with already, a set of Continental Extreme Contact Sports. These are our go-to summer tires, 340 tread wear rating. Great in the dry, great in the wet, low noise, perfect street tire. And for our wheels, we have gone with a set of OEM BMW M Parallel Style 37 wheels. Uh, I found these off of an M540i. These are super cool, super rare. Uh, they are a little bit beat up. They're an 18 by eight and an 18 by nine. So this is an E34 fitment. So as I said, kind of a rare wheel. And I think they're, uh, they're gonna look pretty good on here. This is now set number three for wheels 
on this car. And um, I'm still going back and forth which one I like best. I haven't figured that out yet, but you guys can be the judges and tell me what you think. We're gonna bolt these on. We're gonna get the alignment rack set up. That's right, everybody. Dave just said this was the easiest alignment we have ever done. It was. Wow, yeah. wow. Are, are you turning the tide? Are you starting to feel the BMW vibes, DP? I mean, we just got lucky that the stands were really close to the right height, and then the toe was all kind of close. Just a quick toe adjustment in the front, and that was it. And we didn't have to touch the rear. Yeah. Um, so you, as you guys can see, the, uh, the ride height is pretty good. We just dialed the camber into about 2.1 degrees uh, up front and in the rear. I think it's around like two-ish on one side and 2.3 on the other side. It's yeah. not adjustable back there, so it is what it is. Um, the thing that I forgot to mention is these tires are a square setup all around. So these are a 245 40 18 front and rear. And I went for that because I find the car has better handling dynamics that way. It just to me rides nicer rather than a staggered tire setup. And I kind of like the look. Tell me what you guys think now with the car lowered here. This is certainly OEM vibes, DP. It, it is. It, it yeah, feels like very, it. very OEM. I do love this style. This is like such a classic style of wheel. Even though this car won't see winter, it will see some rain. And odds are, you see these threads here, they will end up rusting eventually. And then the next person doing the alignment is going to curse and swear when they can't get this loose. So what I'm going to do is protect these threads with some of our favorite go-to sauce, the Fluid Film Black here and just give it a, a nice little coat here just to keep all this stuff protected because it's the right thing to do now that I've said it. So this car, unfortunately, has cost me a lot of money in door actuators. Uh, if you guys watched the previous series, you'll know that this door actuator failed on that door. Sure enough, this side is frozen and also not working. And these are not cheap. They are incredibly expensive. They are BMW only. So I think I'm like over 400 bucks into door actuators, which is kind of crazy. But, uh, you know, you need to be able to lock your door. This one was uh, frozen in the open position. So anybody could get into the car, which is why I didn't love parking it anywhere outside. Everything's back together. And let's see if we have a working door. Oh, there. Locked. Unlocked. Yes. There's no effort at all, right? None. Dave? None at all. The uh, the door card didn't fight me. No, no, nothing. No BMW problems at all. Huge thanks to Adam over at Froggy Glass. He just finished installing the brand new piece of glass. And uh, the BMW tax is real on that. I had to buy this trim. This is the outside trim. And it was, man, I think like 300 bucks per side. Per side. Per side. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's expensive stuff. So it's all done. Um, I'm looking at this car. I'm digging the OEM vibes with these 18 inch M parallel wheels. And it's got me thinking. Some of you really hated this. And that was the, uh, these headlights are blacked out and they kind of have like this cross in here. This is certainly an aftermarket look. And the more I look at the car right now, I'm like, it just has more OEM vibes. So what I think I'm gonna do is just snap my fingers and make these go away. Here we are, Euro smileys. I think that's what they call them. Um, I, I like them. I think they're the right look for the vehicle right now. those of you that don't know, this is Jake from Honey Seal, and he's the man that's going to be blasting this car. Um, my main thing is I want to get rid of the, the Cosmoline, you know, the yellowing on this engine bay, or sorry, the, the intake there. 
You think that's gonna be possible here? I know it's old, it feels kind of crusty. Yeah, absolutely. That's the type of thing that dry ice excels at, uh, taking that kind of product off, uh, waxes, uh, oils, and, and dirt and rust, right? So that'll be no concern at all. And here we are. I'm back a few days later. How'd the job go? Looks good, by the way. Yeah, thanks. It uh, it went really well. Uh, these European cars come with a very similar wax that we use. So by taking that off, we just kind of did a reset, right? So we've been able to tell what's underneath it and if there's any damages or, or rust that we'd have to take care of. A couple spots that we did fine, but nothing terrible. Um, some oil spray on this side took a little time, but it came off great and you can see Overall, things turned out really well. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it looks so, so good. So much better than it was. And let's quickly uh, talk about this here. <laughs> yeah, so this, this is where the Bondo is. You can still see there's a little bit of Bondo there. Yep. But um, thanks for cleaning that off. And it looks like there isn't really much going on there. Yeah, no, I can't really say why there's not like rot per se. And yeah. it doesn't look like too much metal put in. I just think maybe it's from that collapsed, yeah, um, the, you know, the points. pinch rail there or whatever it is. Yeah. So. Well, holy smokes, in here really is the transformation. Like, wow, this engine bay now looks complete. It's incredible. So you got rid of all of that like yellow Cosmoline on there and on the uh, the strut towers too, right? Yeah, you can eat off these now. Um, intricate angles, a little bit tough to get in yeah, there. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, not a problem for the ice. It took it off with ease. And you can see uh, because of that kind of product, how how good after all these years was it 30 something years of this car has been alive right and uh, yeah it looks great no wow. man it looks it looks so perfect like wow it looks restored to you know almost factory condition i love it well thank you so much once again for for doing this uh we are still including the hundred dollars off for anybody yeah anybody so, saying speed academy come on through make sure you mention uh, where you're coming from how you heard of us and we'll We'll extend that discount to you. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks, Jake. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back pretty soon. I hope so. Thanks, Pete. Hello, Pablo Escobar. Can I please get a uh, extra brick of cocaine here ASAP? Thank you very much. This may have been a drug dealer's car of choice back <laughs> in the day. Perfect. Perfect test driving conditions too, BT. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. A little bit of rain so we can spin out in this uh, car with no yep. driver aids. Exactly. Although we are on Continental Extreme Contact Sport, one of the best rain tires in the world. If you guys think I'm just hyping it up, Google it and you will see that these things always test like at the top of the board for rain performance. So we're in so good hands here. So we're going to be fine. God, it wasn't raining a second ago yeah. and now no, it's, it's raining. Of course. Are, it's because they knew you wanted to test drive your BMW so that you're being punished. <laughs>
That's, that's what it comes down to. If it was a Honda, it would be a sunny day out right now. Yes. Well, if you guys haven't watched the prior video series, then we did all the suspension, the car drives great. Uh, it was running great. And I have a fog light <laughs> error. Of course I do. Because, because it's a BMW. Because it's a BMW. 100%. Uh, the joy these um, cars bring me. But everything like mechanically at this point should be good to go. The shifter, it's precise. Is it? It's certainly higher effort. Higher effort, 100% yeah. it is. But you know what? Like it just feels nice. Truthfully, I kind of wish I the uh, the shift knob was a tiny higher, bit yeah. higher. It does feel low. You know what I mean? Old Even school when you, cars. I always have the shifters down low. Yeah. I, I well, this is was. this is actually a. Uh, Oh, yeah, I think an E60. E46 or E46 M3 oh, shift, knob. shift okay. knob. So it's a little bit lower than the Is factory it? one. The factory okay. one would have been a hair higher. Yep. So I feel like it would have yeah, been... That's all you need then. Yeah. I still like the old one too. So I wouldn't say this is a, a must have in terms of upgrades. I'd say it's uh, right there in the middle. If you want, like short shifters, then this might be a nice one. And uh, if you don't, then, you know. I'm just not a short shifter kind of guy. factory one. There you go. Oh, wow, that's good traction in the rain. You tell me, this is purely subjective now, DP. Does this car feel smoother? Does it feel snappier? smoother? No, it, it feels, feels smoother. I 100% think like, it feels smoother. Look, it, it really does feel yes. so much smoother. Like, feel that rev range. Yeah, the engine feels like it's revving smoother, for sure. Yeah. And, and like, it sounds smoother. There's less of that like subtle vibration through the chassis that yeah. we had before. Yeah. 100% it feels it, smoother to me. It feels like it's running properly, which is amazing. Wow, wow. that thing gripped I can't up. How grip these tires have? That's insane. Wow, that thing gripped up nice. Yeah. So, it and broke your drive shaft. Right? Uh, yeah, probably. So, watch this. So, I'm I'm right now I am cruising at 2500 RPM. So that I think that flap opens or closes at 4000. Okay. So, if I get on it here. Man. Oh, dude. It's got good top end. It's kind of a race motor. Like it's not it's, really torquey. No. But the more revs you give it, the stronger it seems to pull. Yeah, and it's just so linear. It is very linear. It's really incredible. Yeah. There's no dramatic VTEC that's happening there no. at 4,000 RPM, no. but it and certainly feels spicy. I do find you have to drive this car a little bit different because of the throttle bodies than most cars. Like, there isn't this short, like, you don't pussyfoot around mm -hmm. giving it throttle. You kind of like, you're either into it yeah. or you're not. So it's it's impressive, it's, man. Like, it's designed for a for moose-like right yeah. foot. Oh, there there's a little bit of wheel spin. Race, oh, dude. dude. Oh, wow. It's got good top end, man. Wow. It sounds nice, too. It does sound nice. It does feel like it is running just fine. Man, that's that's a huge victory, DP. By the way, what coilovers did you put on this? Because it the rides. K dude, very the well. KWs. They're so good. Yeah. Like, like, considering how rough this road is, this just, is very nice. All right, we're starting to fog up here yeah, a little bit. Are. So, we're going to have, I'm going to turn the fan on just a little bit here. Does that but, work? Oh, we, oh no, there it goes. Uh oh no, see, it, maybe it yeah, does. It's a maybe very it weak doesn't. fan. I don't oh, know. I think it checked out any there. <laughs> see, oh, I love I it. I think it's this is the typical problems with these BMWs. Is, uh, so only one, 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 two, three don't work, and but then four work. Four works. So like a separate fuse or something. Sure. Now, does air conditioning work in here? Uh oh, I don't see the light coming on. Oh man. In the next episode of BMW Academy, Peter fixes the HVAC system in his E34 nah, M5. Nah, we will, I will take that to somebody I think it might need charging. It does feel like it's kind of cool. No? Mm -hmm. Nah. Uh, maybe just a See, recharge. all things. This is, this is why BMW tuning, this. just like, the gift it, keeps eats, on giving. it eats you up. Actually, here, let's go this way. All right, All let's right. just give, give this thing things. another quick pull here. Oh, <laughs> my shim bob just blew off. <sighs> try to really try to grab that gear there. Oh. Man, it feels Very good. Linear. It feels really good. The brakes are nice. Yeah, there's no vibration in the brakes. Yeah. So Maybe it's time to get a new shift knob. I think it might be. Yeah, I think you need the old shift knob back. Yeah. Can we talk about that intake noise for a second? I know the rain is, it is uh, nice. 
No, it is really nice. Is kind of screwing it up and the blower motor here and everything, but yep. man, no, imagine that really thing nice. had like a proper carbon intake oh, yeah. box on yeah, it. for sure, that'd be badass. Oh, it's so smooth. And it's nice with the stock exhaust because it means you get to enjoy the sound. Yeah, no, you, you, you really, really do. Oh, dude. It's good. All right. You can see I how am, this thing would be like an awesome Autobahn cruiser. It's got exact, long Yeah, yeah. I am uh, really in love with this car now. Everything seems to be tuned right up. Man, this car is now, I think, the definition of a perfect daily driver, a runner, a, a not collector grade car that I can just go out, drive every day, and not feel bad about. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out. The car looks very, very good. It drives well, the suspension is good, like everything. Maybe that shifter is like the one little sore spot that I might be regretting right now, but who knows, I may get used to it. Um, other than that, like this car is ready to go. So thank you guys for uh, tuning in on this, this quick little you know build series here, two episodes. Post in the comments if you enjoyed this kind of stuff, if you like seeing cars come back and be worked on again, or is it a one and done kind of deal? So post in the comments, and as always, thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.